Hey guys, Day here. I farmed nothing but tier 1 blighted maps for 10 hours straight and tracked my profits. In this video, I'll talk about my loot, important components of blighted map farming, and how you can maximize currency gain if you want to try this yourself, and it's all pretty simple. I also tested running tier 16 blighted maps, and I'll touch on a few key differences between low tier and high tier blighted map farming that you definitely need to think about. In those 10 hours, I profited over 4,800 chaos, or around 480 chaos per hour. In those 10 hours, I completed 76 blighted tier 1 maps, profiting an average of over 60 chaos a map. I've linked in the description a detailed spreadsheet of how I calculated my profits with a comprehensive breakdown of the loot so you can take a look yourself. Otherwise, I won't go into too much detail here. Most of the profits were from raw currency drops, such as stacked decks and fusings. Notably, I got 6 Exalted Orbs to drop in that time frame, which I feel was pretty lucky, but even if you remove all the Exalts from the loot pool, we're still earning over 400 Chaos per hour, which is very respectable. The other chunk of currency comes from Fossils and Rusted Scarabs, which can be sold in bulk at higher prices if you have a large supply or be used yourself. Blighted maps also drop tons of Sacrifice Fragments, Divination Cards, and Uniques, and I got a few okay items as you can see on screen here. The reason why I chose to try T1 Blight maps is because it is a strategy literally anyone in maps should be able to do. It's only a tier 1 map after all. It's also super cheap to get started, as of this recording T1 Blight maps are only 12 chaos, and the oils I use to juice up the maps only cost 3 chaos in total per map, therefore around 15 chaos per map. The encounters themselves are also super easy, and some summoner builds can even go AFK through the entire encounter. If you've never run a blight map before, it's basically a tower defense game where at the end you get to loot a bunch of chests. Now how do you get started? The most important thing of them all is to use 3 teal oils to anoint your blighted maps with Sister Cassia. This converts 6 blighted chests at the end of the map into chests that are of higher value. For example, rather than a trash rare armor chest, you might replace that with a scarab chest or a currency chest instead. For my testing, I purchased all 76 maps in bulk across two purchases and then bought enough teal oils to anoint them all. Then alchemy your maps to increase the loot explosion near the pump at the very end. Some people run blended maps white, but I got an exalt and a lot of currency from the loot explosion alone, so I think the ox are worth it on tier 1 maps because they still remain quite easy with the additional mods. As a note, I am also running this on an Awakener 8 level Atlas, which may affect some loot from the loot explosion, but I don't believe makes a very big difference at all, and I don't think it makes any difference with regards to the chests that pop up at the end of the Blight Encounter. You may ask, if Blighted Maps are so profitable, why are so few people doing it? Well, everyone's focused on the new Atlas this league, Blighted Maps appear to have received a bit of a secret buff in their loot, and some people just think Blight Maps are boring and don't want to run them. Maybe you'll find them to be a bit more fun, as they are definitely very profitable. If you don't get a return on investment within a single Blighted Map, I'm certain it will average out to be a very profitable endeavor if you want to farm them over multiple maps. Now, I'll briefly touch on the pros and cons of farming higher tier maps, in this case, specifically tier 16 maps versus tier 1 maps. At tier 16 blighted maps, you get, rather than only tier 1 or tier 3 maps, you get higher level map drops up to tier 16. You get higher tier essences on average, with some rare ones dropping. You get higher tier oils on average, like opalescent, silver, and golden oils. You get higher level unique items. You also get more stacked decks, more currency from loot chests. You get level 21 gem drops, and rather than just sacrifice fragments, guardian fragments can drop. You can get polished and gilded scarabs, shaper and elder bases higher level fossils like sanctified fossils, item level 83 abyss jewels, and tons more. In general, all the loot levels up as you go into higher tiers. And while all that sounds amazing in theory, and while you can get these big drops, most of the time you'll be dropping junk. Golden oils can drop, but most of the time it'll be clear oils. Guardian Fragments can drop, but most of the time it'll be Sack Frags, and while Gilded Scarabs and Polished Scarabs are big money, Rusted Scarabs will be mixed into, into the loot pool. And while I still profited a lot running Tier 16 Blighted Maps on average, the cost to entry is around 65 chaos per map. 
I can't say for certain whether tier 16 Blights are more or less profitable than T1s at this point, but what I can say is that there is pretty much no one selling tier 16 Blights in bulk, so trading for them is a nightmare. T16 Blights are also quite difficult for most builds, and higher tier Reds are more susceptible to streaks of bad RNG, especially with the high cost to entry. For most players, I think lower tier blights are the way to go, and from my 10 hours of farming, I can say with great confidence it is very profitable even at low tiers. Whether you want to run tier 1s or the expensive higher tier reds is up to you, and I don't think you'd be making a bad decision either way. Anyway, that's my little soapbox on farming T1 Blighted Maps in Metamorph League for amazing profits and high currency per hour. Hopefully you found this information useful if you want to try this farming yourself or do a bit of trading and market manipulation around it. If you have any questions or know some useful information I may have missed out on, please leave it in the comments below and I'll respond to everything I can. In any case, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you all next time.